everybody, this is John with At The Eyepiece, and I figured I would do a little workflow here of uh, my setup, and in particular the Melon Cam Junior Pro, uh, with the Milo Stick software. Now, there's a couple of things that are specific to my setup that you're seeing here on the screen. I'll just briefly cover them outside at the scope. Connected serially uh, to the serial port, COM port, uh, is the next remote software. Uh, that's how I am controlling the scope. Uh, I'm using a remote desktop here on the Mac to get to that system out there. In addition, uh, going through the additional virtual COM port that the next remote permits, I'm using PHT guiding through this particular setup uh, as well. So that's a brief ex uh, explanation here of this. Now because I'm using a Mac, I absolutely love this program here. This is called cam twist this permits me to go ahead and broadcast the desktop uh, or region rather uh, to you know night skies network or, or wherever I'd like to but it also has these wonderful deep sky object enhancement features that you can get free uh, offline or um, online rather and <clears throat> really offer some improvements to the views uh, frankly um, Without really this software, I, I really wouldn't be very satisfied at all. I think with with the images directly from uh, the Melon Cam itself, that's just opinion. But I think you'll get to see some of the uh, the images here as we go through. So uh, let's assume right now that you have the basic connections. You have your Melon Cam plugged into uh, power. You have the, uh, in my case, the RCA cable. Uh, going in composite cable going in and uh, I guess it's RCA uh, going into your capture device which in my case is a DCB 100 uh, a dazzle and you have it uh, the melon cam which is the PC version that I'm using uh, which using the Milosic software you will see right down here connected so I'm definitely connected to the melon cam device a uh, couple things. So I'm using a LCD monitor, um, dropping these horizontal horizontal to zero, vertical to one, just as a recommendation from a few other uh, users out there. Go ahead up it to, of course, hyper mode. Usually go ahead and turn my amplifier on up to three. Keep this going. Now you'll notice this counter here. This is counting down uh, from three minutes. I'm not really sure, to be honest with you, what it will hurt if you uh, don't do it. Uh, but you do have the option of canceling the wait period there and just going ahead and doing an immediate integration. I'm not sure what that exactly does with the system. I've seen other people do it, so uh, that's just sometimes I do it. But for the purpose of this five minute window here that we have, I'll just leave it as is. So let's do a 60 second exposure. Just sliding this over to the right. Uh, oh, I will describe here too the auto balance here for your white balance is also uh, what I keep on as far as recommended recommended settings. Um, there's no cooling by the way on the Junior Pro so that's not applicable down there. As we are waiting a little bit longer here you click on the next option. This is your digital your digitizer settings where you can set some of the smoothness, your white balance, your sharpness, etc. We'll review that here when the image comes up. This is of course is your stacking. This is uh, on-screen stacking. It makes a slight improvement. I mean I haven't really seen something excuse me jump out as far as the improvements but it does make an improvement. This is your hot pixel removal. I'll go ahead and cover that in a separate uh, screencast. But here we have our image here. This is our histogram. What we usually want to do with that is we usually want to tweak it down uh, to where you're not cutting off a whole lot of the um, uh, dark area. And of course you don't want to brighten up the bright area up too much at that. And last but not least is your video overlay. You can enable your camera information, your compact and your live settings right here. Convenient, put it sit right there up on there. Okay, so here's our uh, picking up where we had left off. Let's go ahead to a target. 
let's go ahead and see where we are with M91. I hit the enter here on the next remote. We should be going to a galaxy here momentarily. Uh, we are looping the exposure here, so we're going to see where we are at with uh, that particular object. Uh, I think we were focusing on before maybe M100, but for this one we'll, we'll go ahead to M91. Now what I usually like to do is drop the exposure down a little bit just so that I can get the object centered up. Now you notice it's really, really dark. Well, we got to adjust our histogram so that we can see some of the objects there coming up on the screen. Now there's not really much that they are hinted. Let me up the exposure just a little bit. I just want to see where the galaxy is going to be. I think it's going to be right about here. And I might have to drop that down just a bit. 12, 13, there's 14 seconds. Yep. Okay, so here's our galaxy right here. So let's just click it a couple times on my keyboard. That will go ahead and drop down the image to the galaxy. Hopefully it'll be a little bit lower and not completely out of frame, but it should be pretty good. And we will go from there on doing some tweaks here. So I'm going to pick a star here in PHD and uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and guide on that and I'm pretty much going to leave that as is. Go back to our Melancam software, Milo Slick. We'll wait for this integration to finish once we verify that it's centered up, which I'm thinking it will be. Yep, there it is. We'll go ahead and crank this up. Let's do a 60 second exposure and see what we got with 60 seconds with a GC, the amplification game he, gain here on three, which is usually what I'd leave it at. So we'll let that count down again. It's pretty uh, pretty nice to leave the counter down, especially when you're broadcasting online. Gives people the opportunity to kind of anticipate the next refresh on the screen. While we're waiting on that, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the preview screen on the cam uh, cam twist. Now, notice here with the cam twist is let me move that out of the way here there we go I got to adjust a little bit of the capture screen yeah there we go so shrink that up just a bit for cam twist and this just denotes the area that I'm <clears throat> capturing for putting it online okay so here is our galaxy right here I believe this is M 91 yeah M 91 okay so let's go over a couple things here in this particular video first thing what I usually do is obviously start making the adjustments to the histogram so we slide that down not to trim off too much of the of the black background but enough to where it darkens it I don't really crank this up too much looks like we can do it a little bit here Maybe tone it down just a little bit more. Saturation, I usually push down, in particular for galaxies. Just not a whole lot of color for galaxies, generally. Um, our sharpness, I usually get up there a little bit there. And our smoothness, I usually like to go ahead and put that up there, too, at about 32 or so percent there. Uh, and that's basically where I personally leave it. Now you can go ahead and start your frame stacking. This is uh, frame stacking it live there. And basically through the software here, uh, that's it. Now you'll notice these hot pixels. I'm going to show you some nifty tricks here with the hot pixels here on the last minute. What I'd learned from uh, some great people on the Night Skies Network is to crank it up to about 90 here, auto. There's too many. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to drop it down by about five. We're going to do another auto. Too many still. So keep dropping it down until it's able to start to pick up a few here and there. Quite a learning curve, really and truly, when you're talking about video. Uh, there's a learning curve to everything, but you know, video has a lot of these on the fly settings that you just need to tweak and practice with. It's nothing that is going to work. 100% for you that is working 100% for me etc so you're just really going to have to get some trial and error a histogram is very very easy pretty straightforward to use you don't want to crop too much of the background or the black you just want to get it to where it's nice and dark 
at least the background is uh, somewhat for you and uh, brighten up brighten it up enough to where you can see the object uh, you have a pretty decent range there now they are creating hopefully in the next version of Milo Slick a mid-range slider here which should even help even more so that's going to be a big plus um, again kind of went over the hot pixel removals um, you notice and I think this you notice here on the uh, well you can even see it on the Milo Slick a lot of these blue ball you know blue blobs for the hot pixels you know I, I find most of the time that I, I almost just rather have the hot pixels there rather than trying to remove them um, I might remove some of really offending ones with the manual tool but for the most part I really don't do the hot pixel removal at least not that aggressively and for the frame stacking um, you know once this is enabled this is supposed to smooth out the background um, to me it seems very subtle but at least it does make a little bit of a change from what I've uh, I've heard in real world it, it just seems kind of subtle to me so I'm not sure exactly what the deal is with that but I'm sure it's worthwhile to do and of course all of these other settings um, here for your specific digitizer uh, you, again you want to go ahead and play with you see how the saturation you can go really wild there with the saturation I usually crank that down keep it below 25 uh, they don't want to go too crazy with the sharpen either I usually try to keep that at a lower level smoothness that really just depends on again the particular object and I really don't mess with too much the brightness or the um, contrast and any of those other uh, settings too much on the fly I usually leave them pretty much as is and that's it once you are ready to go and get going and broadcasting uh, you'll be all set all right definitely the biggest help is these noise masks here uh, with cam twist and this here the noise mask mask blur amount mask EV and mask power let's start with the blur and as you can see it gets grainy the more you blur it the smoother basically it's trying to turn it into the mask EV that's just really basically how dark it's going to get so you can make some decent changes with it here and there to to really bring out as much detail as you need in your object and again this is all trial and error this is nothing set really in stone but once you get something that you're satisfied with you leave it there you do have another sharpen feature I don't use that that much obviously you can tell it really just kind of destroys the the image but on sometimes I do so I, I like to leave it uh, there but unchecked so let's let's see what the image looks like without doing any of these features so you can see the image on the right compared to our image on the left let's apply our mask let's apply our noise mask our noise reddish background and our deep sky enhancement that's really all there is to it now to me if this was uh, if we had some decent transparency tonight this would really be um, showcasing this particular galaxy I think much better than what it is uh, but it's still doing a pretty good job uh, in my opinion